Well, hello everyone and welcome to another exciting episode here on the MI Gardener channel. I know y'all are gonna love this one because this one is again, one of those kind of topics that everyone asks about. We get asked maybe a thousand times a year, maybe 2,000 times a year, and maybe even 3,000 times a year. <laughs> and I might even be exaggerating, who knows. But all I know is I, there's no way in the world I could count how many times you guys email me about tomato cracking. So I wanted to make this episode about tomato cracking. I'm gonna make it not very long because it's, it shouldn't be a long episode. And uh, it's gonna be really solid information that's gonna help you out. So I have two methods to preventing tomato cracking. The first one I'm going to give you is the surefire guaranteed all day, every day way to prevent tomato cracking. So the reason why tomatoes crack is because their skin is very, very thin relative to other plants in the garden. Stuff in the garden does tend to crack at times, you know, like kohlrabi or radishes can crack, but tomatoes are very prone to cracking. And the reason why is because their skin is so thin. And what happens is imagine your plants have a one-way valve. Water goes in, but it does not go out. The only way water leaves the plant is through the leaves. If it gets into the fruit, the fruit will not shrink. The fruit will never shrink, okay? So what you want to do is imagine your tomatoes have a one-way valve. And if you have a very dry period, the plants are essentially, they're, they're doing fine in that dry period. But as soon as you get a dump of water, that water goes into the plant and that one-way valve gets opened up, water enters the fruit, and the fruit essentially cannot expand fast enough. It's like a water balloon. It's like, hey, whoa, 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 we're getting bigger, we're getting bigger. And eventually it reaches a, you know, a, a rupturing point where the, the tomato simply says, you know what, I, the valve's not stopping and I'm just gonna rip wide open. And that's what happens, the tomato just rips because it cannot stretch. And it generally will happen on tomatoes that are ripe. And that's what frustrates most gardeners is they have these beautiful fruits and they'll say, you know what? I'll just let it go one more day. I, I know, I know you have said that because I have said that hundreds of times and boy, it has come back to bite me because I just, I get, I get greedy. I don't know. I want that tomato to be like one more day worth of ripeness. And I have no clue why, because it really doesn't make that much difference and I cannot tell you how many tomatoes I've ruined. So the first way is that if you see a rain in the forecast or if you know it's been dry for a while and you go to water, make sure to pick your tomatoes first before you water because it, they could even crack while they're sitting on the countertop. I've seen it happen hundreds of times. I'll pick tomatoes that I've just recently watered and I'll carry them in because sometimes I'll water my plants in the early, early morning and then I'll wait for the water to dry a little bit and then I'll go around and I'll harvest later because the watering is the most important, uh, you know, the most important part of the day. And so uh, I'll go through and I'll pick the, the fruit that I've, that I've recently watered. I'll set it on the countertop, ready to make a BLT or something. And all of a sudden I come back after spending the time in the garden, I look at the tomatoes and like half of them have cracked wide open and stuff. And you know, it's just, it's really maddening because it's so simple to, to fix. Before you water, if you know it's been really dry, simply pick your fruit. Now, the next way to prevent it that you, you can water whenever you want is by simply watering on a regular schedule. By watering on a regular schedule, it's going to prevent that drying out period and your plants can have a chance to expand over time. And again, if you do get a big gush of water, it's not going to prevent cracking 100%, but by having the water constantly in in the, the plant system, it's going to make sure that the tomato is expanding, uh, you know, continuously. So there's not just a sudden like, oh, bow, 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 you know, there's just no way for the plant to adjust to that. Now, the second method that I have that is some very, very effective, but not always effective is by spraying your plants with calcium carbonate water. What you can do is take basically, uh, you there's a lot of different, um, there's CalCarb, it's sold by uh, Extreme Gardening. Um, I've used that in the past. But then there's also simply uh, calcium tablets. You can take a calcium tablet and spray it on your plants. You dilute it in water. And the calcium, um, you can even take milk. Milk works because there's calcium in milk. Uh, um, you can even take a, a light lime solution. You can take uh, dolomitic lime 
and put a little bit in water. Again, use it with caution because it can harm your plants. If you use it in the heat of the day, it can burn your leaves, believe it or not. So I use a very light solution, um, whatever it has lime in it. For me, I actually use a Tums tablet. I use one Tums tablet, extra strength. I think it's like 750 milligrams of uh, calcium. I think it's something like that, but I don't quote me on it. I take one Tums tablet, I just drop it in some water, dilute it into a gallon of water, and I'll shake that up, and I will spray my plants and make sure that the fruit gets sprayed as well. Because what calcium does is calcium works with the plant to strengthen the cell walls of the plant. And since your fruit has very, very thin cell walls, that, that outer layer of, of cells that's kind of making the shell of your plant, you want to strengthen those as much as possible. And it adds a little extra insurance that if you get that rain, um, the, the plant is not going to just crack right away. So it's going to help you out definitely. It's helped us out in the past. And I seriously suggest uh, using that method to your advantage because it's something that I use more as a preventative. I water on a continuous basis, but I also go back and I will spray my plants down with that solution. And it's not going to hurt your plant either. If anything, it's just going to help with things like blossom end rot and other things like that. And the plant does not seem to mind it whatsoever. So I use it as a preventative and it definitely will help as well. So hopefully you all use these tips. Hopefully you all learn something new. I told you it's not gonna be a long episode because it shouldn't be a long episode because it's very simple, straight to the point information that's going to guarantee help you out. So there you go. Take that into your garden, help it out. Uh, hopefully your garden is helped out by it and I'll catch you all later. This is Luke from the My Gardener channel and I will catch you all later. See ya, bye.